championship battle never ever end. The Fiend has had one match on WWE television. Of course, it was at SummerSlam versus Finn Balor. Really good match. But this whole video is looking at who The Fiend should face in the future in WWE. Now, if you are new to the channel, it would be really appreciated if you hit that subscribe button. Of course, we just hit 8,000 subscribers the other day, which is insane. So I really thank you for that. Hugely appreciated. If you do enjoy this video, like the video. It really does help it on YouTube. So I appreciate that as well. Share it across social media so your friends can come and have their say. And of course, let me know your thoughts as you always do in the comment section below. Who do you want to see The Fiend face in the WWE? Now for me, The Fiend is this mythological character where at the moment we're still in the honeymoon period of his character development. We could see and hear or do anything with The Fiend and we will go crazy because we love it. And that's why on this list I haven't picked superstars like AJ or Rollins or Reigns or Owens because yes, The Fiend will probably face them one day but right now, I want him to face these guys to create longevity in that character development. Now, we start off with the demon Finn Balor. He's already faced Ordinary Balor, and I like that match, and I'll be up for it again. But it should make perfect sense to everyone that when Finn finally comes back to the WWE, he's going to bring the demon because he needs to. And again, it's going to be an accomplishment for the Fiend to beat the demon because the demon is undefeated on the main roster of WWE. So to kind of give the fiend that rub, you got to kind of imagine with all of these that the fiend is still climbing that ladder and he's still at the bottom of it sort of slowly climbing up although we'd put him at the top, the WWE and the casual viewer, he's still climbing that ladder and it would make perfect sense for a massive name like Demon Balor to lose to The Fiend to legitimise him, to make casual viewers go, OK, this guy's really badass, he's beat Demon Finn Balor. And it's one of those cool moments that you could get goosebumps from. I just want to see it so badly. Now, this one's a bit out there, but The Hurricane. We all know he's on good terms with WWE and must have some kind of Legends deal in place because Mattel are releasing an elite figure of him. So, it would make perfect sense in this storyline for the Hurricane to show up and say, Hey, I've been watching things and I'm here as a superhero to save us all from the Fiend. Well, I know we don't all want to be saved. We all let Bray Wyatt in a long time ago. But, it would make perfect sense from a storyline point of view for a superhero to want to save the day. And you could kind of have the Fiend just destroy him. Have Hurricane have no offence at all. And the Fiend just demolish him in a match. And then even take the mask. Take the power away from the Hurricane. Showing that power and the legitimacy of the Fiend. You could put this on a B-show pay-per-view. Give it 5-10 minutes. And it would still probably be a moment of the night match. Just because the Fiend is in it. It would just make a load of sense to me anyway. Now Randy Orton. We all know the Fiend remembers. The Fiend is here to right the wrong from Bray Wyatt's past. Well, a big thorn in Bray Wyatt's ass has always been Randy Orton. And we've kind of seen a little bit of similarity between these two characters in the sense that Bray Wyatt is now kind of like the legend killer. He's taken out legends. So there's maybe sort of loophole into it or a sort of fact in the future we might come back to. But... Right now, it would make perfect sense for The Fiend to attack Randy Orton. He took the WWE title from him. He burnt down the Wyatt family compound where Sister Abigail was buried. Randy Orton has done some heinous and horrible things to Bray Wyatt. And The Fiend remembers. Of course, you could put this on any pay-per-view. You're going to sell tickets. The Fiend is that kind of character, right? And I think it would also be kind of cool to see Randy Orton scared of The Fiend. Now we go to Alistair Black. And there was a lot of similarities between these two. We had the Firefly Funhouse promos. And then we had the Alistair Black promos at the, roughly the same time. And we all wanted uh, Bray to come back and face Alistair Black. Well, it turned out to be Cesaro. But in the future, I don't see any reason why we couldn't do this. Maybe six months time or something. It would make perfect sense. My only issue with this match would be who loses. I want WWE to push both of these men to the hill and 
then you could have one lose. But right now, I think if you had Alistair Black lose, he's going to lose a lot of legitimacy. And you don't want The Fiend to lose. He should not lose at all in the next 12 months. Um, Alistair Black needs that character development a little bit more, I feel. I feel like maybe because Bray's on Raw and SmackDown, he's got it. But Alistair Black hasn't actually appeared on Raw yet. So maybe he needs that kind of exposure to get properly over. Now, Brock Lesnar would be my biggest choice in all of this because Brock Lesnar is this weird character that we only normally see for the world titles. But why not have him face the Fiend? Again, you don't see Brock Lesnar scared too often. And it would just be perfect for the Fiend to take out Brock Lesnar. Maybe have him hurt him so badly that we don't see Brock Lesnar for six months or something. We don't see Brock Lesnar for six month periods anyway. So it would make perfect sense from a storyline point of view, from an actual reality point of view. And again, it legitimizes the fiend. Brock Lesnar does bring in a lot of casual viewers. So when you this casual viewer actually watches a Brock Lesnar match versus Bray Wyatt's fiend, they're going to go, wow, what is this? hopefully hook them to the product it everyone's a winner it makes perfect sense now the devil's favorite demon kane will be another choice of mine because again similarities between character that's honestly the reason but again kane is semi-retired from the wwe he does show up on the odd occasion but why not have the passing of the talk to him kane we always hear about Taker, but why not Cain? Cain is the devil's favourite demon. And the Fiend is the devil, pretty much. It makes perfect sense for the Fiend to retire Cain. Not only that, but maybe have Cain be scared of Finn. Of Finn? Of the Fiend! I'm not, I'm not editing that. I'm not. But the Fiend will be really cool in this role. And again, legitimising the character. Not harming anyone else on the main roster. Because Cain isn't on the main roster anymore. And it would just make a lot of sense for the Fiend to have that big accomplishment over one half of the Brothers of Destruction. And you can do some really dark stuff, which would be kind of cool as well. Now, Matt Hardy would be a massive, I need this to happen soon. I really do. I really want to see this. Mainly because we always see what happens with the Fiend with the Hurt Glove. I want to see what happens with the heel. We all know that this whole Bray Wyatt thing, we think is due to him being thrown into the lake of reincarnation which in a way is thanks to matt hardy that the fiend is out now well the fiend remembers so if the fiend remembers he's going to be grateful to matt hardy for that but maybe the fiend destroys matt hardy to wake him up and bring back the woken gimmick you know, probably the most over thing Matt Hardy's ever done in his career, which is insane because he had a great career. But it would just make perfect sense to see that kind of different side to The Fiend. And I don't know, maybe you could have these two team up again down the road out of mutual respect or something. That Hill Glove doing it all. Of course, The Undertaker. There's no way I could end this video without talking about this dream match right here. No matter what, The Fiend will always be compared to The Undertaker, whether you like it or not. Mainly due to the fact they're both great characters, but also the similarities between the two. And it would make perfect sense, as the new face of fear, Bray Wyatt, The Fiend, should take that rub from The Undertaker on his way out. Um, one big issue with WWE and Vince McMahon is that they really value the character of The Undertaker and... They like the character. They don't want to harm that character. Well, you're not harming it if Bray Wyatt ends it. And I don't just mean ends his career, he never wrestles again. I mean strips him of his power. Imagine that. You are that powerful that after 29 years in the wrestling business, you've been stripped of your power by The Fiend. Who's going to want to face The Fiend after that? The Fiend is going to be this awesome presence of a superstar that's going to be feared. He's going to be known instantly overnight. He's going to be a legend. It allows Undertaker to transition into the American Badass gimmick if he did ever come back. And it allows The Fiend to legitimize himself, climb that ladder. And it allows Taker as well to go into the Hall of Fame, do a like big career retirement thing on Raw. It would be great to see Undertaker out of character like that. 
Now, that was just my ideas for who The Fiend should face. Again, I've done it just to kind of legitimise him and to continue that honeymoon period for as long as possible and allow us to keep seeing this development of the character that we're all loving to watch and that WWE surely can never screw up. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you as always next time. Peace.